Hello, listeners. Jordan here. I just want to let you know that you can listen to Nighttime early and ad-free on Amazon Music. Include it with Prime. You are listening to the Nighttime Podcast. Hello, listeners, and welcome to Nighttime Podcast's Listener Contributed Encounters with Creeps series. If you're new to this, my name is Jordan, and Encounters with Creeps is a series in which my pal Madeleine Klein and I offer nighttime listeners a platform to share their far too many run-ins with people they consider to be creeps. Tonight, Madeleine and I are going to unpack the 20th volume of your Encounters with Creeps. You're going to hear about a creep at a Tim Hortons, a creep with a hole in his pocket, a creep at a notorious Halifax Walmart, and the story of a listener whose husband is so handsome, so irresistible, that creeps fall over at the sight of him. So buckle up and welcome to another round of your Encounters with Creeps. Ms. Madeleine Klein, how are you doing over there on the other side of the Zoom window I'm looking at? I'm, uh, you know, living the dream. Are you seriously? Uh, kind of. I get to stay home all day, so okay, that's yeah. my dream. That's about the dream. <laughs> uh, anything new in the world of encounters with creeps? Like, did any um, perverts catcall at you or anything lately? No, no, God, I haven't been catcalled in years. Uh, my youth and beauty dwindled away long ago. <laughs> but... <laughs> But uh, no, actually, as I was getting ready for our stream, I was thinking, I was like, anything to tell him, especially a creepy story. But no, that's what hap- that's what happens when you don't leave your house. It's well, wonderful. what we can do then, if we, if we don't got a lot to say to, uh, at the front end of this episode, we should call out to listeners. If you've seen a ghost or anything supernatural or paranormal, it is almost Halloween. We do every year a nighttime podcast haunted listener special where myself, the wonderful and beautiful Miss Madeleine Klein, and handsome Aaron Airport will get together and listen in as listeners of Nighttime share their encounters with the paranormal. Uh, this is a good time to call out for that. So if you got a ghost story, go to nighttimepodcast.com slash contact or email me at nighttimepodcast at gmail.com. Can you tell I'm in like the Halloween spirit already? You're in the Halloween spirit all year round. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, September is my excuse to really start getting into it. And come October, oh man, I'll have makeup on here. I'm pretty sure it was like end of August. You were in Michaels or somewhere, and there was already Halloween stuff out. You were just like in your prime. <laughs> mm-hmm. I love it. But that's not what we're here for tonight. We're here tonight instead to unpack our 20th volume of listener contributed encounters with creeps and it only like the, the the temperature is only rising on these stories oh i i just can't believe we're at volume 20 already we're gonna be at volume like 90 before we know it and mm. because the temperature does keep rising what's gonna like what is what's our 90th episode gonna be like well, what's our our 100th episode we need to go out into the wild with like mics on us and just try to encounter a creep live on our own I think that'll be the challenge for episode 100. Oh, that's just such a great idea. And like, it's, mm. if you know, if, you, if we go to a bar or something, I'm sure it won't take long. <laughs> a bar? We just go to, we go to Walmart. Oh, so Come true. On, you've heard these stories. <laughs> <laughs> but as we often do, let's start the episode tonight with a creep that's been in the news. Uh, maybe not so much the news in tonight's case. It's more so a viral video coming out of Toronto in which a university student uh, is sharing her encounter with a creep at Tim Hortons. And this one is a roller coaster. We could do a whole episode about this, but here's what's going on. So as I mentioned, a Toronto University student, her name is Anna. On TikTok, her handle is uh, at Yikes Banana. She went public recently <laughs> with an experience in which she allegedly had a creepy encounter with a Tim Hortons employee. In the, narrow, in the now viral video, she describes him requesting a sample of her spit and described Tim Horton's lackluster response to her complaint. <laughs> I'm going to play the video and oh my God. let's see if we can maybe come up with some idea of what was going on here. Here it comes. You live in Toronto or you're a TMU student. This is your sign to never go to the Tim Hortons on Dundas and Victoria because what the fuck did I just experience? So I have a singing rehearsal on TMU campus and I like need coffee desperately. I go into Tim Hortons, I get my drink, everything's fine, I put my order. 
the guy gives me my drink and then when nobody else is in the store hands me my drink and then slides me a small empty paper cup and he's like are you in a rush i'm like a little bit but what's up and he goes okay so i'm i'm doing this experiment where i collect people's saliva can you spit in this cup for me i beg your finest pardon i'm like super weirded out so i ended up throwing away my coffee because I don't know what he could have put in it. Call the store. I ask to speak to a supervisor and I tell them what happened. He goes, okay, let me call you back in like two minutes. I'm going to run the tapes. So he goes to see who was like on the clock and he watches the security footage back. So this guy sees exactly what happens to me. And instead of apologizing for my experience or wanting to compensate me in some way, he says, can you just find it in your heart to forgive him? He's just a kid. It's going to be hard for him to like lose his job. You know what I mean? Like, He's, he's only a kid, he's 16, he's an immigrant from another country. I'm like, from a, you know, a distant country. So like, it would be uh, really high on him like if, you know, other people knew about it. It's not acceptable, of course. But like, could you spare him for this time only? He goes, yeah, I'll let him off with a warning. And if this happens again, I'll suspend him for a week. Kind of crazy that you have like a three strike rule for a uh, spit collection. Anyway, you'd think that a supervisor would know how to hold their staff accountable, but um, I guess not. So don't go to the Tim Hortons on Victoria and Dundas because you might get your saliva collected. Uh, Ugh. <laughs> that's disturbing. Every aspect of that is worse than the last. Yeah, and she even includes like a little clip of the manager trying to say like, you know, could you just find it in your heart to forgive him? I don't think I could forgive someone asking for my spit in a retail location. I would be like, unless you are a scientist or something. There's a time and place for everything. Maybe, a, it, a, you know, a science faculty in a university, vet life, mm. whatever. Not <laughs> your Tim Horton's job. Yeah. When it's like when it's empty and she says like she was the only one in there. It was like an empty spot. I certainly would have done what she did and chucked my coffee. Yeah. There's no way I'm, I'm, I'm drinking that. But it actually gets worse. So what happens oh. is she share she shares this video on TikTok and it goes wild with people being like, you know, you can't let this go. You got to go to corporate. Don't just call like the manager of that Tim Hortons. Go to corporate. So she does go to corporate Tim Hortons and she shares a second video in which she describes her um, communication with corporate Tim Hortons and will finally get a version of the story from the employee as well through this follow up video. So I contacted Tim Hortons head office and I was contacted by an investigator. Basically, she asked me to tell the story from my perspective. I told her pretty much the exact same thing I said in the TikTok video. She informed me that there's been records of the supervisor having a conversation with the employee after I made the phone call and the employee's story does not line up with mine whatsoever. So I don't remember the exact details, but she basically told me that the employee told his supervisor I asked for a plastic cup with my order, which I didn't. And when he told me he couldn't give me a plastic cup and he offered me a paper cup instead, I asked if he was a Muslim and proceeded to say, honestly, a bunch of like really derogatory things that I'm not comfortable repeating. And when he told me I couldn't speak to him that way, I apparently threatened to spit on his system, whatever that means. Then he accuses me of threatening to report him to a higher up because I'm racist. When, uh, when you actually watch the footage back, all that happens is he asks me to spit in a cup. I say no, and then I leave. Anyway, I'm just really shaken up by the whole situation. I'm honestly like pretty shocked that he had the audacity to double down that way when his story does not line up whatsoever. So yeah, at this point, um, it's still an ongoing investigation. If anybody has had any similar experiences at this location, please do contact Tim Hortons at office because I think it's really important for them to know that this isn't the first time this happened. If they reach out to me again, I will keep you all posted. So I guess it seems maybe a creepy and probably unhinged as well and seemingly still working at the front line dealing with customers on a daily basis that's scary the only thing more gross than the actual incident is the manager's reply and mm -hmm. yeah the way he's not making his employee take accountability and protecting him for whatever reason and like find yeah. it in your heart to forgive him certainly not <laughs> we we don't forgive we certainly don't forget i don't have a heart mm -hmm. how are you going to compensate me <laughs> <laughs> yeah how much free stuff will i get yeah oh you can't forgive someone for like asking for 
to collect your spit in a cup. No. For no good reason at Tim Hortons. It's not like a... It doesn't matter which route we take. It's weird and creepy. Whether... We don't know why he wanted her DNA, whether it was sexual gratification or whatever. It's weird. He was going to build a... Maybe he is a scientist and he was going to build a clone of her for his uh, creepy purposes, but... Maybe he was going to frame her in a a crime. (laughs) Well, if anyone out there has any theories on what this guy was up to, I'd be interested to hear them. And certainly if anyone had any experiences like this in a Tim Hortons, I want to hear about them. But we won't have time to get to your stories tonight because we have a whole stack, a whole volume of listener contributed creeps to get through. We're going to hear about all sorts of things tonight. I'm falling over my words because there's so much that I want to get into tonight. So let's jump right in. Um, Our first creep of the night comes from a listener named M. And M encountered a creep who had some change in their pocket. Listen to this. Hi, Jordan. Hi, Madeline. Love the podcast, and I'm really loving the Encounters with Creeps episode. I'm a fairly new listener from the Pacific Northwest in the United States, and I've got a ton of creeper situations. I am a self-described creep magnet. Um, More so when I was a younger woman, teenager into early 20s. It's kind of tapered off now that I'm uh, getting a little older. I feel you. Anyway, here's the quick first one that's definitely a creep. This takes place in 2011 or 2012. I was around 22 years old and working as a cashier at uh, a Blank Mart store. It was not Walmart. So I'm working as a cashier and I'm ringing up this elderly gentleman. He comes up to the counter and I'm asking him the usual questions. Did you find everything okay? Would you prefer paper or plastic? Ringing up his items and bagging them. It was a normal, non-eventful interaction up to this point. Thank God. But then it was time for him to pay. And this is where um, his creep status became apparent He was paying with cash, so he handed me the bills and then says, Hey, I've got change in my front pocket here. Uh, Could you help me get it out? And he was wearing a pair of standard blue jeans. Um, Something in his demeanor kind of changed when he said this. Before, he'd just been kind of calm and nonchalant, and he just seemed kind of overly enthusiastic and excited all of a sudden and almost leering at me and something about it just really put me off and made my creep alarm go off big time so fortunately for me i listened to my creep alarm and i responded slowly and awkwardly with oh no no no, that's okay i've I've actually got you covered here and i pulled out our little take a penny leave a penny container and kind of shook it at him no no problem i've got you (laughs) But then he insisted, no, no, I, I've got the money. I, I just need you to get it out of my pocket for me. Again, I countered, oh, sir, no, it's not a problem. I've got gotcha. you. Have a great day. And I finished the transaction, hand him his receipt and his bag and wished him a nice day. I could tell he was disappointed visibly. He didn't say thank you or smile back or anything of the sort, just... <sighs> grabbed his things and hurried out the door. So the whole encounter just didn't sit well with me. So when my front end manager walked by a minute or so later, I called her over and told her about it. And it described the interaction and said, weird, huh? She starts laughing and informs me that I had dodged a bullet. Apparently, this man was well known in our community for pulling this trick, air quotes, on naive young women cashiers. If I had taken him up and put my hand into his pocket, I would have discovered that his front pockets were cut out and I wouldn't have gotten a handful of change, but a handful of his privates. So that's pretty disturbing and disgusting. Uh Luckily for me, that didn't happen, and then at the time, I just uh, laughed it off and considered myself lucky to have followed my instincts and made sure I told the story to all my coworkers and any new, young, attractive cashiers that we had at our store. Um, At the time, like I said, I laughed it off. Now I kind of look back and want to vomit (laughs) or report him. 
but that was back in 2011, 2012. So he just went on his way and not a thing happened. But uh, certainly a creep, big creep, 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 creep. Wow. A lot has changed since 2011 because I don't think you could get away with that uh, for more than one time. No. <laughs> I think, uh, I'm really this, glad uh, that this generation of young people, they, they're a lot more... I don't even know what word to use, but they don't, they don't take shit yeah. from anyone. Well, and I like it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so, well, in a case like this, this guy, when you, when you hear this story like this, he's like a traditional, like pervert pedophile type stuff like that back in like the 1940s and fifties, like I think would have been more common in 2011. Yes. I'm surprised he could get away with it this day and age. I hope not. In her case, like she warned, you know, the other workers and this guy had a reputation, almost like this, like extra dangerous version of the glove guy or something. But what he's trying to do, yeah. that's straight up illegal. Like the, this, I was just going to say, that's like sexual assault, easily sexual something easily. Like that's so gross. Uh, even if his pocket wasn't cut out, like, could you imagine someone exactly. being like, just go in my pocket and get it? I'd be like, are you kidding me? No, just go in there. I have the change. There'd be no way in hell, sir. There's not enough money in the world in your to be in your pocket for me to stick my hand in there, whether or not you have exactly. like a, a disgusting hole in there. <laughs> well, oh, yeah. Actually, that just re that reminds me of when I worked in the OR. We had like little cell phones. Mm -hmm. and little that, cell phones. You know, phones. we'd call. Oh, yeah, just whatever, cell phones. Okay. Regular size cell phones. Yeah, they they were like actually they were pretty big. They were like these. <laughs> so rich. big cell phones. Okay. <laughs> Regardless, so this is how I know my coworker and friend wasn't a creep because I was doing something. I had my, my my hands were full and my phone started ringing and it was in my it wasn't in my back pocket or anything. It was in my side pocket on the side of my um, pants. And I looked at my friend and he's twelve years older than me. And I go, can you get that for me? And he looks at me and goes, I'll wait. <laughs> and I was like, you know what? Good on you. <laughs> See, that's how you respond to something like that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, God. Working, you know, working retail, we hear so many of these stories where you're forced to kind of be friendly and polite and interact Ugh. with humans and uh, by default you run across a couple creeps i don't even think this this won't be the only story tonight that involves someone uh, due to their profession being required to kind of be a little friendly with someone who turns out to be a a creep uh actually the next one let's i'm just going to jump into another one that, that kind of fits on that theme i'm going to call this story a creepy customer wants you to have his phone number listen to this always of course they do Hey Jordan, hey Madeline, this story is for your Encounters with Creep series. Um, when I was in my late teens, I worked at a clothing store. Uh, most of the people I worked with were also other girls in their late teens, so we were all probably around like 17, 18, 19. Um, and we had a customer that would frequently come in, and every time he came in, he made us very uncomfortable. The first time we ever encountered him, he walked up to one of my coworkers, started talking to her. She told him her name, and he was like, no way, that's my wife's name. You should come out for dinner with us sometime. And then he gave her his number. So that was extremely odd, um, just really weird. Then a few weeks later, the same man comes in. He talks to one of my other co-workers. She tells him that she's taking pre-med at university, and he offers to help her study. So then he gives her his number. So that was extremely odd again. Um, so eventually, when he kept coming in, doing things like that, talking to us like that, my manager, who was a man in his 30s, he eventually kind of took over whenever this guy came in the store and the rest of us would just go hide because it was just really awkward conversations. Made us all very uncomfortable. So we're glad that my manager kind of helped us get out of that situation. But come to find out that this man is quite a prominent doctor in our area. Um, so that was kind of disturbing to find out. 
Um, not sure if he had like good intentions or if he was just a creep or just someone that's just overly friendly that doesn't have boundaries. I'm not really sure, but just wondering what your thoughts are. Thank you. Love the show. So it's time to be judge and jury. They want to know if this guy is a creep. Um, what do you think? I say yes, because like, especially the first one. Oh, that's my wife's name. Come out for dinner with us. <laughs> yeah. So that's that's a weird invitation as is. And if he does have a wife, what are you going to say to her? Hey, I met this young girl who has the same name as you, and we're going to go out to dinner. With her. <laughs> oh, great! What? I, I always wanted to meet people also named Judy, or you know, this generic. Name. Right. Um, yeah. That... Like if my husband ever came home and and proposed something like this, I'd be like, um. We've got many things to cover here, but I don't think I want to be with you anymore. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, the fact that he's a doctor for the, the part of that that's upsetting is like the position of trust and maybe people who are unconscious in his care with his hands on them and such. That's a little weird. But it's also like someone who ha who is able to understand the world enough that they can become a doctor should also understand that it's inappropriate to be giving your number out to random retail workers because one has the same name as your wife. The other one is like in school, you're going to like just volunteer to offer to, you're not so busy as a doctor, a married doctor that you, you have time to like tutor this All random that education and doesn't get social cues wild. Yeah. It's a bad sign when you walk into the store, the clothing store for the 30th time and all the young female workers flee to the back room and the manager comes out and he's like, I'll help you, sir. Right. That's your, that's like a really bad sign. <laughs> <laughs> but as someone who has worked at a, at a clothing store, we love those male managers who will do that for us. We're going to have a short break and then we're going to come back to uh, two stories that I know you're going to love. We're going to hear the stories of, uh, of a listener who has a painfully attractive husband. Oh no. We'll be right back. Madeline, you're a married woman. Your, your husband admittedly is a handsome, uh, intelligent guy. Do you ever run into trouble like out in public with him? Oh, um, I'm trying to think. Nothing that sticks out in my mind but okay. if he if he ever tells me like he's had an interaction with whatever a cashier or something like i can't remember he was at mark's work warehouse or something and he was wearing his foo fighters hat he's like yeah the whatever the the cashier complimented my hat and i said was it a girl <laughs> oh, okay <laughs> so you're ready you're ready to go down there um well luckily you don't have to deal with the situation Riley is dealing with. Riley has a smoke show of a husband, and it seems like anywhere he goes, he comes home with a creep encounter. Uh, she shares two stories tonight. Uh, we'll play the first one. This uh, is a story of when her husband worked as a landscaper. Listen to this. Hi, okay, Jordan and Madeline. This is Riley. I'm calling from the States, Indiana specifically. Um, I love the show. I specifically enjoy the um, encounters with creep segment that you guys do. And I actually had a couple of stories that I wanted to submit um, on behalf of my husband. Um, he is gorgeous. I might be biased, but I tend to think that any woman would find him attractive. Um, but I am certain that uh, women in their forties and up definitely are, are um, drawn to him. He's definitely like a cougar magnet. Um, this first story that I wanted to share happened when we were right out of high school. So he was working for a landscaping company the summer before college. And um, he, at lunchtime, had gone up to the front door to ask the homeowner a question. Um, and when they answered, it was a woman that was his mom's age, so about 50. And she had said, oh, I'm sorry, this is my son's house, um, but how can I help you? They got to talking. She answered his question as best she could. And it was July in Indiana. We have absolutely nasty, hot, humid summers. So um, she had asked if he wanted to come in and get a glass of water, if she could offer him anything like that. And he's like, actually, that would be great. Um, so he went in for a moment, asked if uh, – 
she wanted him to take his shoes off. Obviously he's a landscaper and she's like, Oh no, 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 don't worry about that. It's all hardwood. I'll, I'll like mop it up or whatever. And he's like, okay. So, um, they're just talking. He's sipping on his water. She's walking him through the house, explaining how, um, she's watching again, watching the house for her son. And he's been gone for, you know, a couple of weeks and won't be home for like another month. So she's just all alone here in this house, um, taking care of it. And uh, they finally make their way to the back of the house to the master bedroom. And he paused, but went in and she's like, oh, you have to look at the backyard. If you go over to the windows, um, you can see back there the, the pond I was telling you about. So he goes to the window and is looking out and he heard a click behind him and turned around to find this woman had shut the door and um, locked it and then proceeded to tell him that um, actually if he wanted to take his shoes off now would be a really good time so he said that he really needed to get back to work and made his way over to the door somehow got her away from it and got out of there as soon as he possibly could um and i can remember the look on his face when he told me this story he was absolutely horrified oh this woman's <laughs> reading too many spicy novels <laughs> yeah, she is. Oh my god! But you know what? I guess like she shoot she shoot her shoot her shot shot her shot, shot her and... shot. That doesn't sound right. But regardless, I mean, I guess she's got confidence, but it's still weird. Just trapped him. But it, it was a pretty bold move. And it's his, her son's door. room. <laughs> <laughs> Gross. Um. But like I said, that's not the only story she shared. You know what? I wish we could do a whole episode of like this guy dealing with being so attractive to older women. <laughs> but uh, that was what he dealt with as a landscaper. Um, but Riley's husband, he's so attractive that he can just walk into a store and, and Cupid will shoot an arrow at somebody. Here's what happens when Riley's husband goes to the store. This next uh, situation took place when we were like 21 and 22 and we had just gotten married and we went to our local sporting goods store. Um, I decided to stay in the car, uh, so I was not with him when this happened, but I saw the direct aftermath. <laughs> um, and uh, anyway, at the time, uh, the mom of one of the kids we had gone to high school with was actually the store manager. So we had bumped into her pretty frequently, um, wasn't abnormal to just chit chat with her. We knew her pretty well. Uh, anyway, he went in to get his fishing equipment, came back up to the front of the store, and she was the one to check him out. And check him out, she did. <laughs> um, she rang up uh, whatever he had, and he had a coupon that he provided. And she said, "Oh, I'm sorry, but these are expired now. But I have a, um, I have my own personal discount that I can give you." And he was like, "Oh no, you don't have to do that. That's okay." And she said, "No, no, no. I insist. I insist. Um, it's no problem at all." And he said, "Okay, well, I really appreciate that." Um, and as she was packaging up his things and handed him the bag. She, uh, the way he tells it, gra <laughs> grabbed a hold of his hand and locked eyes with him and said in a very, um, he said menacing, but I think what she meant to be sultry voice, uh, <laughs> if you really appreciated that, then you'll give me a payback one day. And that was that. He came back out to me, Ash and Gray. Um, and we were <laughs> trying to decide uh, where we were going to eat. And he said, I can't think right now. I've just been uh, assaulted and then um, proceeded to tell me the story. So, yeah, poor guy. Oh. I, I feel for him. He, he has several stories like this. We've been to um, rodeos where older women have just like grabbed his butt, uh, things like that. He's gotten lots of unsolicited phone numbers. It's just, it's just his his burden to bear, I guess, with the the good looks he has. But um, thank you guys so much. I hope you uh, enjoyed these, and um, I can't wait to hear uh, the next installment. Oh man! Oh, you, oh, that poor guy, and he never went back to that sporting goods store. No. <laughs> 
and he gave up landscaping. There's nothing he just, he should work from home, working for like a call center or something. He just can't be outside. It's people can't control themselves He's around him. got to wear a balaclava when he goes out. Like, so they go crazy. Older women around this guy. Oh. <laughs> uh, I, I like when when we get you know, despite it being volume twenty of Encounters with Creeps, we're finding certain threads that are uh, similarities between some of the different creep encounters we get. But there's always like a twist on it, and that was a, an unexpected twist. The husband who's so attractive that creeps just come out of the woodwork oh. to touch his hand. Well, and you just know that he's like the nicest guy too, so mm -hmm. he can't like be like, "No thanks, <laughs> please don't ever mm -hmm. do that again." <laughs> Mm -hmm. I know you don't watch Curb Your Enthusiasm, but did you, you watch Seinfeld? I w I've been waiting for this because okay. I would clean up at Seinfeld trivia. Okay. So I'm uh, I'm excited for this marine biologist. Yeah. You, you, you watched a little of Curb. You got into it yeah, a bit. I did. But Seinfeld, you're like hardcore. Oh, I might be one of the biggest Seinfeld fans there there is. And so what is the story? George Costanza, the, a character on Seinfeld, he pretended to be a marine biologist to impress a woman? Well, uh, it was a woman from high school that ran into Jerry. And then mm -hmm. she asked about George. And Jerry said, he's a marine biologist. Just and, make it sound special. Yeah. Right. And then so when he's telling George this, George is like, but I'm not a marine biologist. He goes, yes, I know. <laughs> but they, they kind of roll with it. And then yes. he's on a date with this woman near the beach or in New York or whatever. And uh, there's a whale that's dying. <laughs> <laughs> and, and someone yells, and it's actually Larry David. Is anyone here a marine biologist? <laughs> <laughs> So okay. then he goes and saves the whale. And... Mm -hmm. So being a marine biologist could maybe um, be attractive to a lot of people. It certainly is attractive to the creep who approached on multiple occasions a listener named Amanda, who is a marine biologist. Much like Riley's husband, who's painfully attractive, I think being a marine biologist brings them out of the woodwork as well. Listen to this. Hi, Jordan and Madeline. I'm Amanda calling from Long Island, New York, and I have a creep encounter story for you today. So I'm a marine biologist and I work on the uh, docks of a boat launch. So um, I'm working there last summer and, you know, we're out there, we're dirty, we're sweaty, we're covered in mud from the oysters and it's just, you know, we're not looking too cute out there. But anyway, um, there was this guy that I saw walking up and down the docks and he was carrying furniture, you know, like couch, TV, moving it from land to looks like he was moving it like onto his boat. And, you know, I'd seen him like staring for a couple of times and um, he eventually came over and started to ask me what I was doing. And as part of my job, I am an educator, and that includes educating the public who come down and want to know what we're doing and talk to them about it and everything. So I t it was a nice conversation at first. So I told him what we were doing, and he was like, oh, that's great. So cool. You're building oyster reefs. You're restoring our harbor. You're making the water clean again. Like, this is so great. You're amazing. All this stuff. And I was like, yeah, thank you. Thank you. And But, you know, we worked there five days a week, and we saw him moving almost every day this whole like this for like a good couple weeks and he'd always stop and talk to me and um he eventually started asking me like more personal questions and was like oh do you have a boyfriend and I'm like yeah I have a fiance you know we're getting married next year and he'd be like oh that's so great does he know how amazing you are for what you like you're saving the world like all this stuff and I was like oh yeah and he's like that's great you know my wife just divorced me she's forcing me to move out she's taking the house you know and then he's like that's why I'm moving on my stuff like I'm moving on to my boat and I was like oh I'm you know I'm so sorry like that sucks and you know, um, Bye. trying to be nice and <laughs> trying to keep a professional, whatever. And then it just ended up getting weirder and weirder. He would come down and constantly refer to me as his wife and then say things like, oh, I hope I find a wife as beautiful as you one day. You're so smart. You're so, 
like showered me with compliments and it made me very uncomfortable every time. But I, you know, workplace environment, we talked about that. You guys talked about a lot on your show, how you, you know, you're compelled to be nice. And that's definitely the case here. So eventually it started escalating though. He would make comments about my appearance. There was like one day he was like, oh, you know, it's extra hot today. Hope you're drinking a lot of water and, you know, it's going to be, you're probably so sweaty. It's going to be so difficult for you to peel your clothes off later. Like I'll peel, peel your clothes off for you. And I was like, oh God, like, and I just kind of like kept working, just ignored him, whatever. And, you know, it just was getting weirder and weirder. I remember at one point he was bringing down his drum set and he was asking me to go out on his boat so that he could like play me a song he wrote for me while the sun sets and have like a romantic sunset boat ride. And I'd just be like, yeah, sorry. No, like, you know, I, I have a fiance, like I'm, you know, I'm working. I can't, I can't, whatever. And then one day he comes down and he starts you know, like borderline crying, saying how he's so impressed by me. He's never met another woman like me. Like, and he wanted me to leave my fiance and be with him and basically insinuating that he wanted me to marry him. And oh, by the way, I didn't preface this. This man is like probably 50s to 55, somewhere around there. And at the time I was 28. So young enough to be his daughter. I am thoroughly creeped out. And luckily I was actually pretty friendly with the harbor master and I was telling him about this and he was like you know what no this guy's too weird he's being too creepy I'm revoking his boat slip we're getting his boat out of the water like he's done he can't come down here anymore nice and um I guess he gave him a stern talking to because then the guy never came down again so yeah thanks (laughs) wow My favorite part is offering to play. Like, I would have been so curious about what he was going to sing and play to me on the drums. I'd be like, you know, I'm so creeped out by you. I think you're a huge weirdo, but yeah, I'll go on for this. But we're not leaving the shore. I I, I don't. Like, (laughs) guitar, fine. Harmonica, fine. The drum, <laughs> like a, singing a love song, playing a drum, playing the drums. I, I've never seen that before, and I've seen Maybe a lot. Maybe they of were like bongos. Oh, imagine yeah. <laughs> that would be on his host boat. This weirdo. Oh, uh, mm-hmm. um. Honestly, I just, I wish I had the job title of harbor master. That sounds really cool. Yeah, and it That's sounds like the harbor master is uh, a pretty cool guy. Yeah, and, well. He's yeah, the master of the harbor. It's like, this is my harbor. No <laughs> weird stuff goes on here. If this <laughs> lunatic on a host boat is bothering the marine biologists, I got to shut that He's down. He's out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But this is one of those stories where it's just this creep got a, she was friendly to him because as she says, like, well, part of my job is to be an educator. She gave him the time of day and he just couldn't let it go. And he had to come back for more and more and push it and push it. Just like the, we hear about these uh, and see these stories where, you know, um, Buddy goes to Tim Hortons and he feels the need to be all chatty and overly personal with the girl working. Like, oh, you weren't in yesterday, Heather. And I came in oh. to see you. I thought we had something going. You know, like these kinds of guys. And this is just the marine biologist version. Well, uh, the fact that he like really thought that professing his love to her, she would leave her fiance for him. This is just unhinged behavior. And, and move on to the boat. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, oh. Speaking of unhinged behavior. Oh, no. There's a not too far from where I live. There's a, there's a Walmart that is known as like the roughest, toughest, meanest Walmart where nice. only crazy things happen. If people in Halifax are listening, of course, I'm talking about the Mumford Walmart. It's the Walmart in Halifax that's like closest to downtown. There is a bus station right outside. And it's just, if you go there at night, any day of the week, you're going to encounter a creep. I was not surprised when I got an email from a listener named Sky, who told me that they had an encounter with a creep at the Mumford Walmart. We'll take a short break and then we'll come back to it. Is there, in Madeleine, in Regina, where you are, is there a Walmart or like a McDonald's that's especially sketchy? 
There's a McDonald's that's especially sketchy. Um, I would say all the Walmarts. There's three here. They're equally sketchy. They're but all the North, bad. <laughs> they're all bad. They're the, like the inception of of people of Walmart. But okay. yeah, okay. there's there's a specific McDonald's that just okay. Well, you don't go there. <laughs> okay. Well, in Halifax, the Mumford Walmart is certainly. Um, lives up to its reputation as the as a sketchy walmart here's what happened to a listener named sky in the mumford walmart hi jordan hi madeline this is sky from halifax and i have a creep story to share so this happened about last winter and it's a mumford walmart creep story so jordan if you know you know oh i know <laughs> basically i had to go into the walmart and i was like running errands that day but before i did it was about like noon and i hadn't eaten anything that day so i just ran into the nearby mcdonald's to get like a breakfast sandwich to eat and at that point i was standing like above the walmart but there's like if you know where the nslc is and then you kind of just like look over the parking lot i was standing like right there and I'm eating my sandwich. I'm in my own little world. I'm just not paying attention to anything that's going on around me. As I'm eating my sandwich, this man approaches me. And I didn't even, like, you know, wasn't paying attention. And he says to me, oh, yeah, you got it going on. And I turn and look in this 50-year-old decrepit man whose teeth are falling out of his head is standing right beside me and I take one look at him and I go oh my god ew <laughs> and I grab my stuff and I run in the opposite direction to winners so yeah that's my creep story for ya and for those of you who are maybe thinking, okay, is this like a misunderstanding or is this guy really a creep? Why are you a 50-year-old man approaching a 20-year-old girl who's just minding her business and trying to get on with her day? Like, like go babysit your kids or something. Anyways, I thank you so much for taking the time to listen to this creep story bye for now <laughs> and this you is got a, it going on you the got, highest yeah. of praises that you yeah. can get at the mumford walmart <laughs> yeah. and this is midday too it's like it, it's, it's she's getting a breakfast sandwich i don't even know if it was noon at this point and uh, this guy's in full-blown party mode like this isn't cat calling he wanted to like dance with her there in the parking lot <laughs> i wonder if he had headphones on just like blasting like Oh. 80s dance or something um also it, the, like 50 isn't that old but yeah <laughs> but like the fact that this man was so decrepit mm. <laughs> at just 50 <laughs> yeah like she thought she thought she saw a ghost oh, yeah. when, when, but it, it seems it's like a, a kind of a cat calling story but he's not doing it from a distance like he walked right Too up close. to her it was like Point in blank. her face like you got it going on and she ran what? away <laughs> Oh my god, ew. <laughs> <laughs> and ran. Uh, I mean, it's probably not the first time he's gotten that reaction. It definitely won't be the last. Well, um, it, it's the ultimate Hail Mary. Like, catcalling is like the Hail Mary. It's it's like the spam email of trying to meet someone. <laughs> if you do it to a million people, one of them may give you the time of day. You know, yeah, I'm going to just... yell something sexually aggressive at this girl from my car and hope she sleeps with me. <laughs> and I'll just keep doing it. Well, I bet you if you yeah. did it for... 15 years straight bothering people someone would be like hey well and but, remember it's the mumford walmart mm, so there's got to be other like weirdos there that are willing he's yeah. the wrong one she wasn't a weirdo <laughs> <That's> awful. <laughs> she should have went to a different walmart you should have known better <laughs> sky i love that she started with like when i saw the message from her and it was like mumford walmart creep i knew right away i'm like oh here we go but she this even one's gonna it, like, be good <laughs> If you know, you know. I was already like, I poured a cup of coffee to listen to it for the first time because I know. <laughs> and so, like, is this the Walmart that even if you live closest to it, you will go out of your way to go to a different Walmart? 
Some people would, yeah, yeah. yeah. I I enjoy it. <laughs> you, you know what? I it's actually ironic. I was there right before we recorded tonight because I wanted nice. to get like a little snack, and I the pop in my hand right now I got from Mumford Walmart. No one accosted me or anything. I wasn't told I had it going on, but I See, didn't dress up. See, that's unfortunate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but let's keep this moving. We got a We got two more. Two more creep stories. One in one is particularly scary. I'll end on that. Let's listen to Lily's creep at the library. And I, and oh. I enjoy this story because this is not this story. I enjoy this genre of creep stories because there's a lot of discussion in the news in Halifax about the role of a librarian and the public libraries are actually are, are the library staff was on sh on uh, strike recently. And a lot of the issues that led to their strike involved kind of the so the societal pressure that's being put on libraries to deal with a lot of the social problems we have they're almost being you know they're almost something between like a crisis center a food bank a homeless shelter and a public library um, so when i saw a creep encounter from a library i thought i'm not surprised and i bet you librarians in canada in this day and age deal with a lot of this stuff here's what happened to lily I just listened to the most recent Creep Encounters episode, which are some of my favorites, and I was reminded of my own Creep Encounter from my previous job. So here's the story. You guys let me know what, what you think about it. I used to work at the public library, and I loved this job, but if you know anything about a public library then you probably know that it is like a communal hub. And that means that a lot of different type of people will, will go and congregate there, you know, get their books, they'll use the computer, they'll access resources. And I love that about the library. But it means you get some weird encounters. And especially if you work there. And I had an encounter one day that really, really unsettled me. And I, th I still think about it to this day. I was basically taking a payment for a man for a copy order, a really quick, easy, one and done kind of payment. But after he had paid and I had done my due, due diligence, like, okay, have a nice day, blah, blah, blah. He was kind of lingering and he started trying to keep my attention for longer. And at first I was doing my best to make polite chit chat, but at some point I realized, oh, this guy is not wanting to let me leave. He asked to be my friend. He wanted my phone number. When I denied him my phone number as politely as possible, he asked for my Instagram and then my Snapchat. And I was just like, no, I don't think that's a great idea. Um, like using the most soothing voice possible with this guy who was not taking no for an answer. Then he starts complimenting what I'm wearing, and at that point, I'm starting to get, like, physically uncomfortable, and I decide that I'm going to see if I can call a manager out or a supervisor, and of course, the actual manager was gone, so I called the next best thing. So my coworker comes out to sit with me. He finally walks away. And then I kind of explained to her in hushed voices what's going on. And she's like, oh, yeah, I'm so sorry. I'll be happy to sit with you so that you feel comfortable. And then I realized that even after she's sat with me and I feel like everything's okay, and then she leaves, he has actually been watching me from behind a staircase that is not far from the desk. And he's like, periodically like peeking out from behind the staircase and like looking at me and at that point I obviously decide I'm gonna have to leave the desk for a while before this guy is gone and we had to like use a weird code so that everyone knew what was going on and everyone kind of heard about the situation but I was like shaking and like at that point I was like really anxious and nervous and so I had to step away but what do you guys think about that encounter it it still haunts me to this day. He was so calm about how creepy he was. And I think that made it 
somewhat worse. So yeah, that's my story. Thanks, guys. I really enjoy your podcast. First of all, Lily has a great voice. She does. Yeah, yeah she's, she's very soothing. And, and she knows how to use it, too, because even in this case, she was trying to um, calm this guy by using her most soothing voice. She should be a voice actress or something. She should, yeah. Exactly. She she does have a really nice voice to listen to. But, but as as uh, far as the event, it's um it's interesting because that it clearly traumatized her and affected her. I could hear in her recounting it, like in the sound of her voice, it still bothers her to this day. And although the creep didn't take it way over the line like some of the other stories we heard, he seemed to be like he was persistent and not at all put off by her not, you know, giving him her Snapchat and stuff like I, this to me sounds like a predator. And I think she's probably lucky she handled it the way she did. Oh, yeah. Well, and the fact that she like got physically anxious and started like her body started reacting that way. Like your your gut never lies. So yeah. there was something about this guy that just wasn't right. And it just boggles my mind. Like he keeps asking for her number or her Snapchat or her Instagram. And it's like, if you have, and she keeps saying, no, if you have to beg for these things, why do you want them? Like yeah, she's yeah. clearly not interested. Move on. She's working at the library. Like, it, it, yeah. it, it, like it's, you're paying for your photocopies. It's not the time to like be rebutting on pick on pickup lines or whatever right. you want to call them it's yeah this guy um certifiable creep i would i would suggest uh, yeah. especially so like this whole thing with him kind of like hanging over by the stairs watching her be consoled by her mm -hmm. co-worker he could have redeemed himself by just leaving but the fact he lingered and stared at her from behind yeah no um, she trusted her instincts, her spider sense or creep sense or whatever we want to call it. Maybe that got her out of a even worse situation. Let's move on to the final story. This one, I think, certainly involves someone whose spider sense saved them from being on an entirely different style of nighttime podcast episode. This is the story oh. of the of Jenna's creep encounter while she was traveling in Austria. Uh, this I, I want to preface this one with, uh, did you ever see the movie, the horror movie, Hostel? I have, okay. just the first one. Okay, me too. When I heard this story, that's where my mind goes the whole time. Listen to this. Oh no. Hi, Jordan and Madeleine. My name is Jenna. I'm calling from Toronto at this current moment. Um, my uh, encounter with a creep story is um, when I was doing a bit of traveling, I was 19 years old and traveled for the first time without any friends or visiting uh, friends. I traveled to Austria. Uh, I was in Vienna and I woke up very early and I was walking around and I stumbled upon a gift shop and this um, older gentleman around 50 um, invited me in to have a look at his shop and I was like, you know, and I didn't want to say no, so I went in, and you know we were having a little lovely conversation, and he invited me, um, him and his brother invited me for tea, and um, so they're having a traditional tea. They said, um, so I said yes, but we ended up going into a back room. I was like, okay, um, not really comfortable with this, and then all of a sudden, the back, the hairs on the back of my neck just started to. Um, announce themselves so I started to become very aware of my surroundings and what I got myself into um, especially when they kept insisting that um, oh you're traveling alone and they kept mentioning the fact that I was alone uh, and traveling like oh how brave blah 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 I'm like no I'm not traveling alone I made up this story that I was traveling with a boyfriend and another couple and I went into a big backstory about the, these three imaginary people. And they kept insisting, like, are you sure? Like, you know, and they kept looking at me with, like, um, not so sure of what I was saying. But I kept going into, like, a lot of detail. So they started to believe me, I think. Um, but 
they weren't drinking the tea. And I wasn't a true crime buff at the time. I was more into like mysteries. And so I was like, I'm not drinking this tea. Um, so when I had a chance, I sneakily dumped it into the planter. And um, they were both standing up. And then I'm like, oh, I'm going to go. They're waiting for me. And the younger of them put his hand on my shoulders and pressed me down and proceeded to give me a massage. So I was even more aware of what I got myself into. And he started to, with the massage, started to move his hands down my chest. So he started past, he went past the collarbone and then continued and was only interrupted by a client that came into the gift shop. And I don't know where his brother was, but he went to deal with the client, a, a lady who is my savior. Cause I was in my head, like panicking about what I needed to do. Um, so thankfully this lady gave me an excuse to stand up cause he had left the room, stand up and start to leave. And he said, wait, 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 wait. Him and his brother gave me this card with their names and like a note that was very creepy on the um, back of the postcard um, of their hometown in Greece. And um, I held on to that trauma card for a long time. I think I just recently threw it out like um, when I moved from Montreal to Toronto. Um, but yeah, and I had I walked by there the next day and I did see them trying to pull other ladies in there and not men. Um, so I really do believe I got myself out of that situation just by um, trusting my intuition and and the fact that my dad um, t taught me subconsciously from a young age to um, be careful. <laughs> so that's my story. Thank you for listening. Wow. Oh, my God. Yeah, that's pretty Oh, creepy. that poor woman. Yeah, that's a... I, I maybe they were just odd and really friendly, but it certainly sounds like they were up to something. Like I understand that certain countries, men have a different way of of coming on to you. They're mm -hmm. very like blunt and abrupt about it, and so that it, when she said that their hometowns in Greece, I was like, mm, mm. say no more. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's uh, to me, it's. And in the way she tells it, it very much seems like the these two brothers are kind of working together, preying on tourists coming through. She was only like 19 or 20. If they hear that she's traveling alone, what they did, even if they didn't mean well, or even if they did mean well, they should have known that that may make her feel uncomfortable. Right. They just, they. it seems like they can't read the room. Mm -hmm. uh, I also went to Europe by myself when I was 20. And You're I thankfully, uh, it was a lot of fun. I bet. Yeah. <laughs> um, thankfully, I didn't have really any, uh, not like that. Um, I didn't have any like crazy creep encounters. I had more creep encounters when I went to Italy and Greece when I was like 16 than I did when I was 20 and alone. Okay. Um, but maybe I'm just blissfully aware, like kind of like Mr. Magoo. And I just like have no idea mm. about what's going on around me. Uh <laughs> But the fact that they weren't drinking the tea, that's what got me. Yeah. Um, it's like, ooh, we've all so seen weird. that. Like you, we've seen that in a movie a hundred times where, yeah. You know, and she did the right thing. Dump that tea in the planter and get the hell out of there. And then the massage part, we're, we're leaving that out. Of course, they're oh. creeps. you don't massage a stranger who's like, I'm going to leave. Just wait. I got to rub the you. Right. That's guess, oh. just sit in the chair while I rub you and drink that tea. Well, my brother helps the lady out there. Drink the roofy tea. Yeah. Oh, yuck. That's um. That's a scary story, and I think, like, I can honestly say without any exaggeration, I think she's really lucky she came out of that yeah. unharmed. Absolutely, because mm -hmm. yeah, just the way she was describing it, it's uh, it got weirder and weirder. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. ugh. yeah. But, you know, like we've said a million times, if you get that feeling something's not right, get the hell out of there. Even if it involves being 
uh, quote unquote rude to the person you're serving or you're interacting with. It's better to be a little rude than be a little, use your nightmare imagination for what it may be. Uh, But it's, we've been through a lot tonight. This is, uh, what, what do you think of this volume? Did I impress you? As always, yes. Uh, that last one got pretty dark. Mm-hmm. Uh, I hate when they go over into like credit predatory territory and like okay. you know, yeah, could lead to something very illegal. That's what that did. So let's um let's lighten the mood by again uh, celebrating Riley's wonderfully attractive boyfriend, husband. The Cougar Magnet. Uh, Riley, if you're out there, I want to hear more stories about him. And you know what? I'm going to be a creep myself. Send me a picture. I'm curious. We want to know what he looks like. I won't put. I won't <laughs> share it online. I'm just going to send it to Madeline, and her and I will give a, like a review on air. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, this has been a great night. For any listeners out there who have encounters with creeps, and we know every one of you do, go to nighttimepodcast.com slash contact and use the voice recorder, or you can record it yourself and email it to me at nighttimepodcast at gmail.com. And as I always say, if you hear your voice aired on the show in the form of a voice message, email me your address and I'll send you something special as a thank you. I think we can put a bow on this one though, Madeline. I think so. It's, uh, you know what, this episode had everything. We, we laughed. We almost cried. There was even a Seinfeld reference. I'm happy. We did it. <laughs> and the, we forgot about the whole spit thing at Tim Hortons. That's a, that's a wild story. Oh, spit's so gross. Like, saliva has to be one of the worst bodily fluids. Maybe we that's should a, stop. <laughs> that's how I'm going to end it. <laughs> All right. Um, we'll wrap this up. Madeline, what a great night. We got to do this again. You name the time and place, and I'll be there with bells on. I want to thank you for joining Madeline and I for this episode of Nighttime. Now, I'm going to start wrapping up things here, but before I do, I'm going to end with thanks. First, a huge and sincere thank you to every one of you who took the time to share your creep encounters with us. These stories serve as a great reminder to keep our eyes open and our wits about us. And to all the other listeners who have a story to share, we're going to be doing a whole bunch more episodes in this series, and we'd love to feature your creeps. You can share your story with us at nighttimepodcast.com slash contact, or by sending it in an email at nighttimepodcast at gmail.com. If you have something to share, go to the site now. The voice recorder is easy to use, and if you make any mistakes or misspeak, don't worry. I'm going to edit it before it goes to air, and I'll make sure we all sound our best. Madeline and I are excited to hear from you. At the end, I want to give a big thanks to Monty Data, who contributes the music for this episode, and LJ from the Dystopian Simulation Podcast, who provides my intro and outro voiceovers. And then lastly, but most importantly, a massive thank you goes out to each and every one of you listening, as without your interest and your support, this show would be as pointless as it would be impossible. Now on the topic of support, let me thank the newest subscribers to our premium feed. Lauren, Don, and Dave, we appreciate you. And for anyone else who'd like to support the show, you can help us out here in a variety of ways. First of all, a premium feed subscription costs just a couple bucks a month, and that money funds the creation of new episodes. But the premium feed will also give you those episodes two days early, give them to you ad-free, and give you access to a full back catalog of episodes. If you're interested, you can go premium at nighttimepodcast.com slash contact. And even if you're not interested, but still want to support the show, You can do that by simply sharing this episode on social media and letting all your like-minded friends know that you listen. Your support is very much appreciated. Now, until next time, take care of each other, hug your loved ones tight, and let me know if you see anything weird. The Nighttime Podcast is written, hosted, and produced by Jordan Bonaparte.